couple images that St. Peter gave us this morning in the first reading, beginning with a follow-up of what he said yesterday. He said yesterday that we are born again at the conclusion of yesterday's first reading, born again by an indestructible seed. And so naturally, if we're born again, then he moves in to, in connection with that image of being born again, he says, beloved, like newborn infants, so those who have new life, okay, long for pure spiritual milk, so that through it you may grow into salvation, for you have tasted that the Lord is good. So with this new life, this new birth, cling to the Lord, receive his grace. His word is not only the word that gives us life, his word is also that which sustains life. Okay, just like milk sustains the life of a newborn infant. And then he moves to a new image. Okay, and this is the third part Okay, of, of what I said yesterday. If yesterday um, we, had, we had to talk about holiness and then what constitutes holiness, how much we love. Okay, holiness, love. The third part is right here. Come to him a living stone. That is Jesus. Jesus is a living stone rejected by human beings. Okay, he's quoting the Psalms here. All right but chosen and presses in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, substitute house for temple. Okay. So Jesus is the foundation stone of the temple. So in John's gospel, he says, you know, destroy this temple, referring to his body, destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. Our Lord's body is the dwelling place of God. Within the very person of Jesus Christ is the divinity. You know, he's fully God and fully human. But now St. Peter says something very radical. We, who are ransomed by Christ, as he said yesterday, who are born again, who received his spirit, now are part of the temple. We are living stones meaning in our very selves, the spirit that we received, okay? The spirit that we receive, we become also part of the temple of God. This is why we talk about the church being part of the mystical body of Christ. The church is literally the body with Christ as the head. We are part of that. And then he goes on and says some more radical stuff. You are a chosen race, royal priesthood, holy nation, a people of his own, so that he may announce his praises. Chosen race, royal priesthood, and a nation. This was Israel, right? This was Israel in the Exodus, and this was Israel as prophesied in Isaiah. Israel was that chosen race, the holy priesthood, holy nation. You know, remember in Exodus, when, when Moses makes the covenant, they become, they become, become priests. And then they're laicized with the golden calf. And then after the exile, Isaiah's talking about, okay, once again, God reforming this holy nation. Well, well Peter's telling us that that's happened. <laughs> you know, the holy nation has happened. We are it. We are it. But then he concludes with, beloved, I urge you as aliens and sojourners. So, yes, we are a nation. But right now, it, as we live here, we're a nation without a land. Like the idea is, is the life we live now is, is temporary. We're, we're, we're aliens. We're sojourners. We're moving from one place to another. And so the fulfillment, the definitive moment of this kingdom of God, again, it begins here. We are part of it, but quote unquote, the land that occupies is not, not here, not yet. We're moving towards it, you know, to the fulfillment of the, of the true sanctuary of the true, true temple, which is again, the presence of God himself. So Peter says a lot here. 
in this reading, and he's kind of going to segue into the rest of his letter. But of all these things, we are ransomed, we are born again, and we are priests, and that we are a temple. Moving to the definitive moment, definitive culmination of God's true heavenly temple. May God bless you.